नमस्ते टू एवरीवन मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन नमस्ते भैया नमस्ते एवरीवन सो वी आर प्रैक्टिसिंग एक्सरसाइज 1 and we are discussing step 3 of exercise 1 where we are trying to find out whether we are comfortable within or not so in exercise 1 we are trying to observe the self and in step 1 of exercise 1 we try to look at the imagination that is going on in me in particular the feeling and we try to observe the feeling as it is without evaluating without judging without changing without reacting just observing as it is as a pure observer and i hope with the time that we have spent observing the feeling and not merely the thought or the object of imagination there must have been some progress you might have been in a better position now to observe the feeling so we try to just observe it and this is something that we have to continue this is something that we have to do every moment so i have to be observant of my feeling every moment once i am able to see it so i can now find out whether the feeling that i have at this moment is naturally acceptable to me or not that is to say whether i would like to continue with it or not that is to say whether it is in accordance with human nature or not and then in step 3 we are trying to find out the state of being at this moment so with the feeling that i have whether it is acceptable or unacceptable naturally am i feeling comfortable or uncomfortable am i happy or unhappy am i in harmony or disharmony so this is something that we are trying to practice and we have been discussing this assignment even yesterday so many issues cropped up while discussing one major issue that we discussed while observing the state was the state of fear that many times we do have fear so this is just one of the possible states of imagination when we feel uncomfortable and there could be lot many but the focus is not on observing the disharmony within the focus is to understand harmony but when i go to understand harmony then i have to evaluate my current state and then i can see all this i feel fear inside i feel anxious inside i feel restless inside i feel when i'm excited inside i feel you know very dull inside all those possibilities would be there so now this becomes more more and more clear to me my current state of being and with this clarity then i can go further to investigate what i need to do to transform my state of being because the core issue that is we are trying to explore that we are trying to explore is whether happiness can be my innate nature or not so presently we can see that happiness is not our innate nature and that's why we have to keep depending on something outside for happiness whether it is some feeling from the other or whether it is some sensation from the body but i am not naturally happy so how to ensure this happiness naturally how to and sure that i do not have to depend on anything outside for my happiness within me i am always in harmony and that is possible only when i am able to awaken to the higher activities of myself that is to say i am able to awaken to the activity of contemplation i am able to awaken to the activity of understanding and to the activity of realization so gradually in this process we are trying to see the relationship we are trying to see the harmony we are trying to see the coexistence but just not as a word but we are trying to get into the meaning and we can all see what it all takes to get into the meaning in the workshop we get the proposal we like the proposal we appreciate the proposal and in our living we are able to also modify certain things in our behavior in our conduct but within ourselves we may not be resolved within ourselves might be carrying so many assumptions we might be having so many states of discomfort so we are we are trying to come out of it so the assignment that we took was something similar to the day before yesterday so make a list of issues 
or situations, maybe 20 to 30, that make you uncomfortable by seeing your imagination. And you can even go over your past to see this. So try to recollect all those situations when you feel uncomfortable. Try to see the feeling within you in all such uh, issues or situations. Find out if the feeling is naturally acceptable to you or not. Now, another thing that we added yesterday, since it came during the discussion also, in addition, try to see whether your focus is on observing the imagination as a pure observer or just expecting the outcome of the whole exercise. Now, we have a tendency to hasten. We have a tendency to expect the results first and make efforts later. Or whatever we do, we try to expect results then and there. So in place of that, if my focus is on observing the imagination and not just expecting some outcome, then I get into the process of observation. Else, it may be the case that I do something, I start expecting the outcome, and maybe I am not clear what outcome needs to be there. So I'm expecting something. Okay, if that is not there as per my expectation, then I feel disturbed and then I start doing something which is not actually what I intended to do. So the whole process of self-exploration gets retarded. And in that whole process, we are wasting a lot of time. So the more you are able to enter the process, you will start appreciating it. It is enriching by itself. If I start observing my imagination, start observing my feeling, evaluating, and then gradually as we go along, we start uh, making efforts for transformation, that outcome is also very naturally there. But I do not have to actually you know, uh, focus on the expectation part. I actually have to focus on the observation part. This is a common mistake. And many times we do get the questions uh, saying that why is it not happening? Why the outcome is still not there? Why I'm still reacting? In place of that, we can better try to observe and our questions could be in the form like how to make it more clear to me how to observe it better you know how to be in a better position to keep on observing naturally every moment so this focus has to shift it is also a big achievement in itself if i'm able to uh, shift the focus because many times our focus is not on our effort is on the outcome that we are expecting. So this is all that we took as an assignment yesterday. If you have anything to share or if you have any question, then do raise your hand and ask. Nice. So let me ask again, how many of us could make the list of such issues or situations which make us uncomfortable? You can respond in the chat box. Yesterday, there were only three to four persons. Today, do we have a larger number? You can respond in the chat box. Try to make that list. See, you might be carrying so many things within you. Yeah, Gita is saying yes. Tarabhaja is saying yes. Nice. Avishak is saying yes. Many times you come across certain situations <clears throat> which you had not imagined earlier and you find yourself uncomfortable, isn't it? Maybe suddenly you are asked to come to the front and speak to 100 people and you become somewhat nervous. You might not have imagined that this may happen to me, isn't it? So there are certain things which make you little depressed. There are certain things which make you highly excited. So there could be so many situations and you can proactively observe it within you. Nice. Today we can see so many participants who have made the list. That is very good to see. Ji. So what we can do, then we can observe for 10 minutes. We can look within we can go over all the three steps now. So to begin with, we have to observe our imagination. And there, 
we need to ensure that I'm able to observe the feeling. Okay. Without mixing anything, without judging or evaluating anything. And then I have to find out whether it is naturally acceptable to me or not. And then I have to see my current state also. Whether I'm comfortable within or uncomfortable within. Once I'll say that once you are able to accomplish this thing, no, you'll see that your dependence on something outside for happiness gets reduced a lot. Your rushing for certain things outside for happiness gets reduced a lot. You are more calm and at peace with yourself. You will also be able to see that if you start seeing some development inside you by looking at the feeling and evaluating it, it becomes somewhat very enriching for you and becomes a priority for you also. Whenever you get time, you try to look within in place of switching to your mobile or TV or computer or in newspaper. Okay. You start utilizing that time looking within and tracing within yourself what is happening inside. Let me find out. Maybe you start dozing also. Maybe you start feeling sleepy also. If you sleep also, no, while doing this exercise at home, you'll find that the sleep is deeper. You get more rest in limited time. We get many times tired because of thoughts. Thoughts about which we are not resolved. But if you get down to the feeling, and if the feeling becomes naturally acceptable to you, like the feeling is such that it is naturally acceptable to you, you are comfortable inside. Whenever you sleep, no, you sleep uh, better. And the uh, quality of the sleep will improve. That is also there. So nice. So we'll observe for 10 minutes and then we'll continue the discussion. So yeah, kindly mark that and start the observation. G nice. We have been observing our state of being for the past 10 minutes. We have been trying to see the feeling inside, trying to evaluate the feeling, and also trying to current see the current state. If any question is there, any observation is there, you may kindly share. Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste, everyone. Bhaiya, yes. whenever I, yes, whenever I uh, imagine uh, the thoughts what I carry are mostly those thoughts which uh, gives me contradiction, um, opposition, or some not good feelings. But the thing is that even uh, there are many situations where I am grateful to some other person or the some other person is grateful to me. All those are naturally acceptable feelings. Often they are forgotten and those issues that happens in our day-to-day -day life, they only come in, a, come in my mind. So, Bhaya, I want to ask you, uh, why is it so? That is our conditioning. So we are conditioned to focus on problems. We are conditioned to focus on the shortcomings. We are not focused on seeing what is there. We are focused on seeing what is not there. So if some fulfillment is there, we are not. So in case there is some fulfillment in the relationship, we are not able to appreciate it. But if there is some shortcoming, in the fulfillment, there's some mistake by the other to keep on churning it in our thoughts. So that is our conditioning. Gradually, when we are able to pay attention to the natural acceptance, our focus shifts to what is there. So now I am able to see that yes, I am there, the other is there, the nature is there, the existence is there. Earlier, it was not a part of our imagination, also. We're just focusing on what is not there. For example, mm -hmm. a very common example is that there is a white wall in front of you mm -hmm. and there is a black dot on the wall. Mm -hmm. Somebody asks you, what can you see in the front? What do you say? 
I can see the black dot. I'm not able to see the white wall. Or at least even though I'm seeing, I'm not sharing it. Mm -hmm. On that entire big wall, I'm only focusing on the black dot. So this is mm -hmm. how we have got conditioned. Maybe mm -hmm. the other person has been behaving rightly with me nine times. And for once, he or she commits a mistake. So I mm -hmm. start thinking about that particular mistake and do not appreciate those nine things which he or she is doing rightly. Somebody mm -hmm. is working for me <clears throat> about the day. Right? Mm -hmm. According to my expectation. But at some point of time, my expectation was not met. And then I become ungrateful to the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, I have to share with you some uh, more, one more problem, but I don't feel that this platform would be nice. But just summary wise, I'm telling you that I'm getting some contradiction or some disturb disturbance, but it is not like that, that I have, I cannot sleep or like that also. The thing is that regarding some promotion in our university, so being senior member, they we are not being promoted they, because the authority have set a particular criteria and we are not fulfilling. Do not do that criteria is not as per other UGC or these norms also. But previously, when those there are some people who, whose criteria are not fulfilled, they have been promoted, but newly they have developed that criteria. So whenever we Whenever that thing comes in my mind, I'm not, I'm, this is not like that. I'm unhappy for them or I have something contradiction for those people. It's not like that. But sometimes there is a feeling that uh, being the senior member and being, um, being uh, the coordinator and committee member of various committees and all and being so involvement work for all those years, they are not appreciating our work and we are not being promoted. So the other people of the university, they everybody is very, when I, these things are known to all and they are saying, no, they are senior, they should also be promoted like this. So a feeling that uh, maybe I am exploited or maybe uh, with me also, some others are also being exploited. So that is a feeling that comes. So actually it is a disturbed feeling. Do I think that, yes, I should not think so much because um, there are many good things also for which we are working there. But that is one of the main thing also, no, in one's life. Okay. So two things here. First of all, this is not the main thing in one's life. So first mm -hmm. of all, you have to make your right program. What is your program? So now why are you working there? So one purpose of working there is to fulfill the need for physical facilities, isn't mm -hmm. it? Which you Anna, are doing, you are able to fulfill your needs and you might be earning enough so that you can save for the rest of life also. So that part Anna, is getting fulfilled. Second purpose could be participation in the larger order. So you are participating in the education system. Mm -hmm. So you have to see that whether I am able to participate in the larger order rightly or not. So am I mm -hmm. making the right utilization of this profession or not? Mm -hmm. So the first part is getting fulfilled anyway, whether you are at this post or you get promoted to the higher post. Mm -hmm. so only that when you prom get promoted, you may be having a better opportunity to participate in the larger order. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? But then again, you have to see whether your focus is on participation or getting some favorable feeling from outside. Mm. Isn't it? So mm. these two points I was mentioning of the first part. So I have to make out my program rightly. The second thing is there are some norms laid down by the system. Mm. And the system goes by those norms. Those mm. norms may or may not be based on right understanding. And this is something that we are clear about. Mm -hmm. the, norms of the norms for promotion, the norms for retirement, all those things may be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when I'm there in the system, I opt for those norms. I mm -hmm. agree to those norms. Mm -hmm. And then only I'm there in the system. And I'm of course clear that the norms may not be based on right understanding. I'm of course clear that the people who are trying to 
make people follow those norms do not have the right understanding mm-hmm. so accept all these you know, things mm-hmm. in the system that is there mm-hmm. so in place of struggling with them i'll try to work for right understanding i'll try to work mm-hmm. for right feeling in the people mm-hmm. who are making the system run mm-hmm. and that again comes to point number 1 how being at this post i can participate in the larger order mm-hmm. even though you get promotion it's not that it is going to ensure happiness in continuity mm-hmm. yes promotion is due you know you need to get the promotion that is fine but mm-hmm. even if you get the promotion it is not going to ensure happiness in continuity mm-hmm. even if you don't get promotion you can be happy in continuity Mm-hmm. So the basic program of the self has to be clear to me. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever you do, maybe you get even the promotion, but then you mm-hmm. may worry about the arrear that I should be getting the arrear also, you know, which is still due. Or you get the promotion, but the other got the promotion first; you got it later. Mm-hmm. All this will still be there. So mm-hmm. what I generally suggest is that let us make out the need for physical facility correctly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and see how my profession is going to make it get fulfilled mm-hmm. isn't it and then i can uh, be assured of the first part that yes my need for physical facility is not getting fulfilled now i can start working on the second part of participating in the larger order and then i also accept that yes the system is like this isn't it mm-hmm. it may be the case that i am getting so many facilities which even people who deserve may not be getting Mm-hmm. got on a job maybe which is a government job there are so many who have not got on this kind of job right they might be struggling so i already have got so much of privilege from the system only there are some privileges may not be available so my focus is now entirely shifting mm you can tell yes i do whenever i am thinking many the thoughts come naturally in me at the same time there is also a thought after thinking for all this contradiction naturally there is again in my feeling a thought that uh, oh i should not i should stop now and i should divert my feelings so is it this is good or bad my it's not of diverting you can look for the naturally acceptable feeling what is naturally acceptable to you so just shifting my attention is not the solution if i'm mm-hmm. unresolved then my attention will keep on going there here and time and again mm. this or that way so that's mm-hmm. why we are exploring right now i can mm-hmm. look into the issue and try to resolve myself mm. let me give an example that uh, in the university in which i am working so there is one college a government college uh, mm. an old government college in lucknow and mm. there is a scheme for career advancement service a scheme mm-hmm. career advancement scheme you know that is called as yes. cash cash yeah cash and the promotion of so many faculties due for so many years in that college and people have been struggling for it right and if mm-hmm. you ask the faculty there to attend a workshop they don't have time right and the whole mm-hmm. system in that college has become has come to such a poor state Mm-hmm. that people are not interested in teaching because they have grudges for the system their promotion is due they are not mm-hmm. conducting classes properly the students are suffering yes that yes very true with them and and that's why always some or the other issue will be coming up nobody is ready to sit with another faculty or talk to another faculty so yes, much yes. Hmm. they have the big opportunity you know they have they are into a government job they have a regular job they are getting hmm. salary on time mm-hmm. like, promotion is due but they have spoiled the whole system they are not able to make the right utilization of the system yes yes so workshop there has become difficult the students mm-hmm. are also suffering what are we doing okay it's nice and why the promotion is not being given because whenever some name comes for a promotion people look into the conduct of this person and then the feedback would be there that this person and has been not taking classes he is not fulfilling mm-hmm. all responsibilities given to him or her so why mm-hmm. to give the promotion to this person so we are mm-hmm. not ensuring definite conduct we are not fulfilling our role in the system and then we have grudges and we are spoiling the system also ultimately the system is made up of us only we are making the system mm-hmm. i just gave an example the way it is happening in the government institutions today mm-hmm. 
so we have grudges for the system and we are not fulfilling our role also responsibility also properly and that's why the system is getting further spoiled and the people who are sitting on the top when they look at us mm. they are not assured of our conduct and then they also get into a position let me see how mm. you get the promotion you are not yes. following your know, orders you know you are not teaching properly students are complaining mm. against you and then mm. they are fighting mm. and since they are not getting promotion many of them are also getting into corrupt practices mm. unethical practices so you are running the mess will take up care of the you know food that is coming to the mess to their houses <laughs> things like that would be happening mm. so that is there in okay. place of struggling mm. with all this we can make mm. the right program for us yes yes see we can very much see that if i work in the system for this much of time i will be able to save enough for the rest of life so the first point that i feel prosperous working the system that is fulfilled now i have to spend all my time participating in the larger order mm -hmm. yes yes bhai yes bhai thank you so much nice so we have been paying attention to these points we have to continue with this now with this we can go to the next part of the discussion so bhaiya can we go to the next slide in the content so we have discussed step 1 2 this example that we have discussed we also discussed the assignment here so observe your imagination particularly your feeling with respect to a close family member for example your spouse your child your parent your sibling etc or with close friends or relative what is your feeling towards this person when you recall this person is this feeling naturally acceptable to you or not are you comfortable or uncomfortable with this feeling recall your last interaction with the person recall and observe the feeling you had for the person during the interaction was the feeling naturally acceptable to you or not were you comfortable or uncomfortable with this feeling recall an interaction with the other when the interaction was unpleasant observe the feeling you had <clears throat> for the other during this interaction was this feeling naturally acceptable to you or not were you comfortable within or uncomfortable within with this feeling if you are taking this assignment i will not discuss it further right so we have discussed till step 3 now we'll go to step 4 yeah so in step 4 again we are doing the self evaluation and here we are looking into the decision maker who is deciding the feeling so in step 1 i have become aware of the feeling i have at that moment and in step 2 and 3 i have evaluated the feeling with this i am able to see that it is my feeling that leads to my happiness or unhappiness now the question is who is taking decision for this feeling which is the source of my happiness or unhappiness so i am asking this question to myself who is taking the decision for this feeling who decides the feeling who decides the thought that i have at this moment some external physical condition some other human being or i myself so who is deciding this feeling now we have to look into this who is deciding the feeling for me i am uncomfortable within <clears throat> fine now who is responsible to make me uncomfortable for example the issue that lipi ji was raising so the promotion is due is some person sitting on the top who is not allowing the promotion and whenever i think of that issue i may feel opposed to the person for example not particularly in this case but for example and i may have a feeling that this particular person is making my life unhappy this person is responsible for my discomfort inside now i have to see within whether it is true or not so many times it does happen that we keep on blaming others for our state of being if i am unhappy if i am disharmony if i am uncomfortable i feel that it is the other who is making me uncomfortable it may be my wife my husband my mother in law my father in law my child my friend my neighbor my boss my peer group member 
any student, whatever. And we see that we keep on having such thoughts where we feel opposed to the other and we have grudges about the other and we keep on blaming the other for our unhappiness. So I have to find out who decides my feeling. Is it the other person or some external situation? Maybe some situation is there. Okay. Maybe the power went off and you become uncomfortable. Right? Now you start getting opposed to the electricity board. These people are so corrupt. They charge so heavily. Right? But still the power is not there. I have come from the office. I wanted to take some rest. Now the power is not there. What to do? These people have made my life a hell. And in my thoughts, I may not be even aware. I am blaming them. Right? And you ask for the tea. And nobody prepared tea for you. Because the power is not there. You start shouting at the other person. The other person also becomes uncomfortable. He or she starts reacting to you. These are some common situations which may be there in our houses, in our offices. So, one situation is that the physiochemical condition has changed. The other is that the other person has not responded the way I was expecting. And because of all this, I get uncomfortable. And then I start blaming others for you know, my unhappiness. Now, this is something quite common. So, I have to decide for myself. I have to be clear about myself that ultimately who is responsible for the state of being within me, for my feeling, my thought at this moment. So, if you try to look within and don't just think about it, try to look within, you may be able to see that it is I who decides the feeling, the thought that I have. The other person or the situation outside may only act as a trigger. So the power went off, it is only a trigger. It's not actually the electricity board that is making me unhappy. I was depending on the favorable sensation for my happiness and that favorable sensation is no longer there. I was depending on the test of tea and it is not being fulfilled. I was depending on some other's behavior and that is not being fulfilled. Okay, so ultimately it is I who was having this imagination within me. And within my own imagination, I'm blaming the other. With the same situation, I may have a different imagination. Even though the power is gone, I may not be blaming the electricity board. That is quite possible. I can see their situation also. That if the power has gone, they are also sitting in the dark. Right? They might be lacking resources. So when I'm able to see that it is me who decides the feeling, not the other, then I'm also able to see the situation of the other. I'm also able to appreciate the efforts of the other. But before that, I have to see that in the same situation with the same person, is it sure that I'm going to get unhappy? Or if I have a different thought, if I have a different feeling, I may be happy. You are calling somebody and the other was not picking a call. And you got irritated. You called three or four times, the other did not pick the call. You got irritated. Right? Now, next time when you meet the other person, you tell him that, okay, I have been calling you three or four times. Why didn't you pick the call? He may say that I forgot to pick my phone and it was at home and I had gone outside. Now you see that there is a change in your feeling. You were uncomfortable when you were making the call and the other was not picking the call. And now that the other person told you the situation, you became comfortable or you have a different feeling for the other. Earlier you were getting opposed to the other. Now I no longer have the feeling of opposition for the other. Or it may also be the case that it was a false ring, the signal was not there. The network was not there. Many times you are trying to make a WhatsApp call. It will be ringing. Okay. But actually it is not ringing on the other side. Now there are two options there no, in WhatsApp call. Earlier it will say that it is calling. And then it will say that it is ringing. So they have understood this. And they have now you know, chosen two different words here. So all those things might be there. Now 
I get one kind of information, I have one kind of feeling. I get another kind of information, I have another kind of feeling. So basically, I am associating some meaning to the information that I am getting from outside. It is me who is deciding the feeling. I analyze situation in one way, I have one kind of feeling. I analyze the situation in some other way, I have another kind of feeling. You are calling somebody and the other is not able to hear your voice properly. You speak the same sentence three or four times. The other person is not able to hear. You feel completely irritated and you know, just cut the call. But did you ask the other person where the other person is standing when you were making the call? Maybe the other person was standing in a crowd because of it, there's so much of noise and the other person was not able to hear. Now you have a thought that maybe this person was standing in a crowd. Maybe this person was standing on railway station and that's why he could not listen. Now your feeling changes. The situation outside has not changed, but with your own analysis, your feeling has changed. Right? You get reminded of something. Maybe today is certain, second Saturday and you, know, you were expecting the person to be in the office and do something for you. You are not aware that today is second Saturday and you were expecting your work to be, you know, to be done. The work was not done. You felt uncomfortable. Now you suddenly get reminded, oh, today is second Saturday. Today is not a working day. How will my work get done today? And you have a different kind of feeling. So you'll see that ultimately it is you who decide the feeling. In the same external situation, with the same person, with your own analysis being different at different occasions or at different moments, you have a different feeling. Once you are able to see this, that it is me who decides the feeling, then you stop blaming the other for my feeling. Okay. So with all this that I said, if you have any question, any reflection, you can raise your hand and ask. Are you able to see this? Maybe when we are having this session in the morning, you know, we are able to say that, yes, it is me who is responsible. But are we able to see this clearly when the situation is there, when the same other person is there in front of me and I am having a discussion with the person? Okay. So I have to make out whether I am able to see it at that particular moment. Try to find it out. Maybe the spouse is not happy with you. The spouse is shouting at you. And you start feeling inside that this person has made my life a hell. I don't know why this person came on this planet. You know? And in my life, I am unhappy because of this person only. Otherwise, every other person is going to make me happy. Only because of this person, my life has become a hell. And you may keep thinking like this. For hours together, days together, months together. So you're always blaming your spouse for your unhappiness, which may not be true. Um, yeah, namaste, namaste all. Namaste. Uh, in case of any opposition, uh, I can easily see that, yes, I am the decision maker or I am doing, I am taking the decision. But when situation is not in opposition, it is favorable, I feel difficulty in getting into this step. I mean, I don't see the importance of this step. So you can say something about that. So when the situation is favorable, then you may feel excited. Now, once you are getting excited also, then who is responsible? It is the situation outside or yourself? No, so in that case, that, myself. Myself only. So you'll see that we have these fluctuations in our feeling. I feel excited, right? And then I have some expectation out of that excitement. And that expectation is not met. And then I become unhappy. Hmm. For example, <clears throat> you have gone to a social gathering. You find somebody. You feel totally excited to see so many people. And you want to talk to everyone. I want, you want to shake hands, embrace everyone. But some person comes to you and does not embrace you or does not shake hands with you. He just 
moves by your side you are there in the state of excitement the situation is totally favorable maybe you have some reunion of your batchmates but suddenly something has changed and you become unhappy you were excited earlier and now you feel dejected and you develop some repulsion for this person who did not shake hands with you you feel some repulsion for the other who did not embrace you so we keep on entering into such situations of excitement and depression and mm -hmm. some yes. feeling feeling thrilled at times and somewhat feeling very dejected and dejected at times uh, so yes. it is me a little really. more a little yeah. more clarification that uh, suppose uh, i am not excited also i am not in a position either or nor i am in in kind of any excitement this normal so in that case mm. need i know to no go to this step or not I, or there is no importance of this step in that case there also Suppose no excitement there, yeah fine so again you can see that if i am in a state which is acceptable to me naturally then also i am responsible it may Not be sure. the case yeah that i have explored within and i have come to understand and that's how so i made this effort mm -hmm. that's how but if i have not come to see the reality and still i am feeling uncomfortable i uh, comfortable it may not continue it may change the next yeah. moment hmm. so the core cool yes. thing is that i can see that i am responsible for my imagination now when we do exercise 2 this will become more clear that the situation is outside okay the information is coming from outside but it is me who is associating the meaning to this information similarly it is me who is analyzing it is me who is comparing it is me who is testing and selecting it is me who is having this feeling yeah yeah so thank you thank you bhaiya nice bhaiya good morning sir ji good morning uh, sir actually uh, uh, i ha uh, my son is 10 no 10 years old boy he is quite often uh, complaining about his bus driver he is scolding or he is shouting at him and if somebody else make mistake he will say softly and he is shouting on him uh, but but what is my problem is if i raise anything to bus driver or if he, anything with respect to the teachers they might harm my son like that i will i i am having a feeling sir if i raise anything wrong which uh, somebody else is doing they might harm us or harm my son like that i will be having a fear sir how to overcome this yeah now try to explore into this it may be the case that it is only your apprehension that may not be true also so first of all see why the bus driver is shouting on your son he he is uh, quite uh, um, uh, making noise in the bus system sir and I, I he is making noise 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 and he is laughing and uh, you know he is making fun and all with his friends sir. so that is disturbing bus driver at him sir so i i just uh, told my son also don't make noise noise and all so that may disturb the bus driver and i made uh, him to understand that uh, he 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 is making some disturbance to the driver and uh, you just obey his uh, this one because uh, he might be having a concern on you if you fall down if you stand like that and all i i try to make him understand but my son is always uh, uh, blaming him yeah so now you can see the problem the problem is not with the driver the problem is with the son so the driver is focusing on driving and if some passenger is uh, shouting making noises then of course he will lose his concentration he may not be able to even listen to the horn by the other uh, vehicle so the okay. driver is feeling disturbed okay. so now the son can of course sit comfortably there without making any noise and help the driver to drive carefully because if some accident is there the driver is going to be blamed nobody will blame the child Yes, yes. The driver also has a family. If something happens to him, if he is imprisoned, na, if he is uh, punished, then his whole family will suffer. So he has his own concerns. So yes. now we can see that essentially the issue is with the son. The son can sit comfortably, peacefully there. When he goes to the school, then he can play with friends. 
but why to make noise in the bus maybe other uh, fellows of his class are also feeling disturbed because of his noise that may be there actually sir it was happened uh, quite before and he is now he is seated in another uh, front seat but he is uh, willing to sit with his friends sir but he is not allowing and uh, i said it is okay you sit in the front only uh, i said he is not making noise now it was uh, in uh, third standard and all so now he is continuing his um, rudeness to on him like that he is saying yeah there again like the child wants to go back and sit with his friends and this driver has an apprehension that if he goes back and sits there again he will again be making noises so maybe yes. the conduct of the child has not changed okay maybe because of okay. some order you know uh, he is okay. not able to express his indefinite conduct so there again like we can have a dialogue with the driver also and with the okay. son also it's okay. not that the school authorities are going to harm your son yes yes that you can talk to the school authorities also okay. we might be carrying so many doubts within so sometimes okay. we become over protective of those whom we are over evaluating and okay. we somewhat become opposed to those whom we are under evaluating okay. so it may be the case that you are over protecting the child you are becoming over conscious for that so okay. first of all the child needs to have a definite conduct you know? okay. the child you are saying something yeah yeah sir actually i am having this fear with the teachers also if they are uh, uh, doing something or they are just uh, misevaluating or under evaluating i never spoke to the teacher so these are all happening in my mind i i never spoke to any of those persons sir. so it i'm could only be the case that you are doubting from your side the situation is not worse not that worse you need to get into dialogue with the teachers you can also get in dialogue with the bus driver and maybe the son is little naughty he might be disturbing the class also so the teachers might also be feeling opposed to him so first of all you have to take care of the child because today he is a young child small child but if his conduct does not get transformed tomorrow you know he may be creating more disturbances so you have to take care of the child first you have to get in dialogue with the child first okay you have to see how you know the child develops right understanding and right feeling because there might be so many complaints for the child maybe every complaint is not reaching you okay. that is also quite possible what is the age of the child 10 years sir 10 years 10 years studying class 5 or 6 isn't it fifth 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 yeah yeah so now okay. this is the time when we have to take care of the child properly otherwise by the time he gets into teenage you know and we have not let him explore into such issues may it might be still more difficult to transform him okay okay he, so he try to will, yeah. yeah he will be very very smart actually sir in in our home what i observed is he is very quiet uh, uh, boy and he will not uh, be rash rude and all is very soft spoken and he gets very uh, you know uh, down easily if somebody says something he will be very down and uh, he will be sit quietly and he cries like that sir now again i think we will have to discuss this issue at length uh, it may be the case that we are trying to dominate over the child at home so the child is submitting in the house but the child is not submitting at school okay that might be the case okay so the child is not reacting here at home but okay. the reaction is getting expressed in the school because there he is getting an opportunity to express himself okay so in place of dominating over the child we can try to discuss the issues with the child listen to the child okay. let the child explore and But we also have to be a good explorer Yeah, what is happening, sir? I used to say a lot of things. This is right or this is wrong. You just think like that. He says you will start lecturing, ma. Like that, he will say, sir. I don't. Uh, so you are lecturing. <laughs> See, yeah, saying yeah, something yeah, as right or wrong is not the solution. Okay. You have to talk to the child. Let the child know of the basic aspiration. Let the child find out his needs, needs of the self, needs of the body. all this is quite possible we can have this kind of discussion 
Oh, thank you. So at home, he is being lectured. He is being somewhat dominated, maybe. So okay. now, where to express? So he is getting that opportunity to express in the school. So he becomes somewhat noisy in the school. If the child okay. is able to act naturally in the house itself, then the child will not be noisy in the school. Oh, fine. Nice, Didi. Oh, nice, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank. You. Yeah, we can discuss further, but it is time now. So we'll have to conclude the session. Okay, thank you, sir.